Cowboys. The Cowboys ahead of the Cincinnati Bengals. Jub, who would have thought that you would see 17 points for the Cowboys in the entire game? They have it at the half. Cooper Rush, 12 of 18 for 162 yards and a touchdown. What's up Incredible. with that? I don't know. I picked. We both picked the Cowboys. To cover. Getting seven points. Yeah, I thought they could keep it relatively close today. But yeah, let's not be crazy. And we thought, thought that this performance was going to happen and they were going to win. No. I think we thought that the defense would keep them in it and play pretty well. That Yes, that's but, what I thought all week. Yeah. I just went back to my belief system. I believe this is a good defense, and I, I really think they are. And holding the Bengals to three points and a half is pretty darn good. They still have two quarters to go, so – We'll see. But, no, I'm impressed. This is what we wanted to see, right? Just show us you're a a football team. I love the aggressive fourth down call on the first drive. You know what? You just can't roll over and lay down. Like, you know, you're going to try to give Cooper Rush the best chance to go out there and win, of course. And, you know, you may have seen a little more running plays than maybe you like. Well, they actually split it right down the middle. Cooper Rush, 12 of 18, and they had 18 carries as a team. So they're really trying to uh, do all those little things as far as time of possession, keep the chains moving, keep the Cincinnati Bengals offense on the sideline so it can give them a really good chance to win. You just have the advantage yeah. of Joe Burrow being a quarterback that's holding the ball way too long. He's already been sacked four times, and they haven't given him any time to throw the ball down the field to his uh, to his weapons. He does hold it a while, and the Cowboys have some offensive line problems, but, man – Cincinnati has offensive line problems, and they did last year. We've talked about this week. They made some aggressive moves in free agency and even the draft to try to fix them. They haven't fixed them yet. We'll see what happens in the second half. You see Pollard get a few more carries maybe? He did pretty good the time they pitched it to him. Yeah, yeah. Zeke has uh, – he has nine touches, uh, Pollard does. Five carries, four receptions. Uh, Zeke has 10 carries, so it's pretty even split as far as touches. And it's just a performance that they couldn't have dreamed up any better than what they're putting out right now. When was the last time you saw – and I know you had the question. We didn't do the research, but when was the last time you saw the Cowboys score 14 points in the first quarter? Had to have been a long time. It's been a while. I'm yeah. sure they did it in the first half of last year, probably, when they got off through some good starts. But it's been a while, and um, did you hear what we were talking about in the pregame show where uh, Ed yeah, Werder, yeah, I did. <laughs> where Ed Werder reported that um, Mike McCarthy had a bigger hand in game planning and maybe even play calling today, and of course Romo's all about oh Kellen Moore he's so great oh, he's, hey, he's Tony. Up, all hey, this Tony. stuff hey Jim hey Jim oh yeah he's drawing up all this stuff you know maybe give McCarthy some credit of look you have some good play design but let's Let's do this when it comes to the sequence of a drive. And I don't know, maybe McCarthy had something to do with a backup quarterback and yet you've had this kind of production. I think sometimes you may, you know, shorten the playbook a bit and make sure you're getting your quarterback the best chance out there. And that's a really good thing for, uh, yeah. for Cooper Rush. They've scored the two times they've been in the red zone. They've only had three penalties today, and one of them was a really, really bogus uh, roughing, whatever yeah. you want to call it, on sports. That was a horse hockey hit. call. Yeah, that was bad. Donovan Wilson's was uh, pretty egregious, so yeah. they had to call that one. But only three penalties for the Cowboys. They've had the ball like 17 minutes. It's the perfect formula to try to keep your team in it with a backup quarterback. And you know what? Cooper Rush is playing well. He's made like some he, good throws. Yeah, yeah. He missed a couple of throws like every quarterback's going to do. But yeah. all in all, he's not afraid to go deep. He had the one deep ball to C.D. Lamb, and it wasn't – that far off. No. He had the one right at the end of the half that was a little late, a tick late, and was almost picked off. But other than that, for what we've seen out of Cooper Rush before, I think everyone feels extremely good about what he threw down in the first half. Especially compared to how they played last week against Tampa. This first half is really out of nowhere. And then we saw with Tampa today, what, they allowed one touchdown? So that's and two games real late. now. Late, really? yeah. yeah. So two games for the Buccaneers, and they've allowed uh, one touchdown. So that showed you how good that defense was last week, and the Cowboys were spinning their wheels for whatever reason. But, yeah, this is really encouraging. Yeah, and we you- got to see the artwork. <laughs> uh, this is all good. That's right. Usually you worry about the Cowboys because they do come out pretty fast. I think if they script those first maybe 15 or so plays, it's always about – 
them making those adjustments, in-game adjustments, and they've been really bad at that in the past. But the first two drives were 75-yard drives for the offense. Yes. Like, they didn't need any defensive turnovers or anything. They drove the length of the field twice with the backup impressive. quarterback to uh, to get in the end zone. So, really impressive showing so far. You know Cincinnati is going to try everything they possibly can to get Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon and all those guys into the mix in the second half. So, while they only scored three points in the second quarter, uh, you feel that if the defense can come out in the third quarter and maybe, you know, make a little bit of a stand, you know, have to, uh, you know maybe allow make them punt in the third, then the Cowboys are looking pretty dang good in this I, game. I haven't seen Cincinnati run the ball very well, and that could put them in second and third and long. So I like that part of it too. Yeah, and Burrow's going to hold the ball yeah. a long time in those also. So, yeah, Joe Burrow's the leading rusher with 26 yards. Joe Mixon only has five yards. Five carries, five yards for Joe Mixon. So there you go. The Cowboys have played maybe one of their best first halves they played in a long, long dang time. All that without Dak. Dare, High five, man. Dare, what I'm talking dare about. Dare we say? No, don't say it. If it's what you were saying about <laughs> oh no, no recognition, of, no, don't no, say. Of it. course not. We're no, not like the say. game's over. No, the game's not no, over. No, no, I'm no. just saying about. Do we have a quarterback controversy in Dallas? It's yeah. If if this continues, I guarantee you, you will get that call on the post game, and you better not make that noise. I'm going to come up here and hit you with a two by four. All right, make sure you listen to the post-game show. Post -game. It's Donovan, it's Jake, it's Dan McDowell. Oh, uh, yeah? Hey, hey Dan. Uh, is Dan going to be a part of the post-game? Yes, you are. So make sure you watch yeah. the game, okay? Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. I got it. Yeah. For Jub, I'm Donovan. For Donovan, I'm George. Picks with friends kind of sucks. Oh, but that's wow. okay. Make sure you listen to the post-game. Cowboys 17-3, <laughs> first half.